The Volvo 123 GT was a special, top-of-the-line version of the already established Volvo 120 series, colloquially called the Amazon models. I'm going to use those terms interchangeably. But the 123 GT could hardly be considered an Amazon in the literal sense of the title. It was essentially the mechanics of the much sportier P1800 model, with the more practical 122 body, topped off with a variety of accessories during its very limited production run. Available exclusively in the two-door configuration, the 123 GT started in 1967 and continued through the four model years through the end of the 120 series line when production ended in 1970. Essentially being a 122S with P1800 mechanics, the story goes that persistent delays in manufacturing the P1800 bodies in the United Kingdom caused a backlog of the higher performing B18B engines and the M41 overdrive transmissions, and so Volvo used up the excess by creating and producing the 123 GT. Well played, Volvo. Officially, Volvo states that the 123 GT is designed for those not able to fit their family in a P1800 but are still looking for a sportier car. To quote AB Volvo's press release, number 382, There have been increased demands during recent years from sporting circles for a factory-built, sharper car in the 120 series. In order to satisfy these demands, Volvo has further expanded its car program by producing a GT version of the 120 series. The new car has a designation 123 GT and is fitted with the Volvo B18B engine and an output of 115 base horsepower SAE. In addition to this, the car is fitted with a comprehensive range of special equipment. End quote. The Volvo 123 was never sold in the US, but over the decades several cars have been privately imported and it was also available for American customers via Volvo's European delivery program. From what I could find, the 123 GT was priced somewhere around 10 to 15% higher than the non-GT Amazons, but that information is kind of a gray area, so if you know, please put that in the comments. The majority of the 123 GTs were built in Torslanda, Sweden. Volvo at the time was also building cars in Ghent, Belgium, and Halifax in Nova Scotia, Canada, but they didn't keep a very good record of the production numbers for the 123 GT in any of those countries. In a 1986 letter, in response to an inquiry from an enthusiast in Australia, it was estimated by Volvo that only around 1,500 units of the 123 GT were ever built. Today, only 600 are on register. We just don't know how many were ever out there. A majority 505 of those available on record are in the 1967 model year. That leaves just 84 units for 1968, 12 for 1969, and only one example on record for the final year, 1970. With sparse records, it's really no wonder that some articles written on the Amazon list the 123 GT as having only a two-year production run for 1967 and 1968. A 2011 Swedish article mentions a production figure of 1,980 model year 1967 123 GTs and 197 for model year 1968, plus a handful of cars for model year 69 and 70, but the real answer is we just don't know. Regarding the 123 GT production figure, Volvo made 89,000 120 series cars in 1967, so even using the generous number of the GT production, that's 2.2% of the total production figure for 1967. For 1968, those numbers go down to less than one half of 1%. That's very few cars indeed. Next to the P1900, of which only 68 were ever made between 1956 and 57, the Volvo 123 GT is probably Volvo's second rarest car. The Volvo 122s that were built in Canada were actually marketed as the Volvo Canadian or the Volvo Canadian GT. Those came with a lot of small accessory changes. Uh, most notably, the Canadian GT had a limited slip differential and a four-way emergency flasher under the dash. The Canadian GTs were also available in some pretty rare colors, light green, light blue, and dark blue. As for the rest of the world market, the 123 GT was available only in three colors. Number 46 red with black interior, 
number 79 pearl white with red or tan interior, and number 94 dark green with tan interior. For 1967 and 1968, the Volvo 120 series overall was available with three basic 1.8 liter engine configurations. This is the famous B18 engine. The B18A single carburetor version made 85 horsepower and 108 pound-feet of torque. This had an 8.7 to 1 compression ratio and used a single Zenith Stromberg 175 carburetor equipped with the A-grind camshaft. The A here stands for awful. This was not a very popular car in the US market and it was usually paired with the 3-speed automatic transmission. The 122S, the S stands for sport, is what most Amazons on the road today are. They've got the B18D twin SU carburetors with the same 8.7 to 1 compression ratio and the B grind cam. The B stands for better because it made 100 horsepower and 108 pound-feet of torque. And then the top of the line 123 GT was equipped with a B18B paired with the C grind camshaft. It had a high compression, 10 to 1, which was achieved by different casting thicknesses of the head, as well as a thinner head gasket. In addition to this higher compression ratio, the B18B in the 123 GT also had a different armament of the SU HS6 carburetors, and that has a stated output of 115 horsepower and 112 pound-feet of torque. Beginning with model year 1969, the new 2.0-liter B20 engine was installed, with similar variations all across the Amazon lineup. The low-compression version, B20A, single Zenith Stromberg carburetor, making only 90 horsepower and 119 pound-feet of torque, with an 8.7 to 1 compression ratio. Now talk about taking a step back. The other version of the B20 was the B20B. This was now available on the non-GT 122s as well as the 123 GT. The B20B made 118 horsepower and 123 pound-feet of torque with a 9.5 to 1 compression ratio and the dual SU carburetors. Besides the higher output engine, which was previously only available on the P1800, the 123 GT also shared the P1800's transmission. That's the M41 gearbox with overdrive. For 1967 and 1968, this was a D-type Laycock de Normanville, very similar to that of the Jaguars and Triumphs of the era. And for 1969 and 1970, they upgraded to the J-type, a much more robust version of the same transmission. Starting in 1964, overdrive transmissions were an option for the Amazons in all markets, except for those cars sent to the US. With the birth of the 123 GT, in 1967, Volvo made overdrive exclusive to that model alone. However, Volvo also delivered a number of non-GT Amazons with overdrive since then. So it wasn't technically exclusive, just on paper, formally. Similarly, some police models or demanding customers' cars were equipped with the high-output version of the B18 engine, the B18B, so exceptions were made with all configurations whenever the checkbook supplied the incentive. In addition to the drivetrain differences, 123 GTs had the following exclusive accessories. Power brakes, the same as all 122s, GT steering wheel with the Volvo GT badge on the horn button, a dash pad compartment, a Smith tachometer with a chrome ring, a red needle, and that 10 by 100 scale. Chromed, fully reclining Recaro front seat fittings. You could lean the seat all the way back. Whereas other Amazons had a plastic knob which could only recline a few degrees. Three 123 GT badges on the body. That's two on the fenders and one on the trunk. Two Hella 162mm accessory lights wired for driving and fog, with white covers that have blue Volvo text on them, a much more powerful horns made by Bosch, very iconic round fender mirrors, anodized chrome wheel trim rings, a chromed exhaust pipe extension, different wiper arms and blades of a more robust type for that high speed driving, mercury level activated lights in the engine compartment and in the trunk. 
with protective grating available as an accessory. An SEV Motorola 35 amp alternator with a fully transistorized but later mechanical charging control to supply full charge even at idle and help with the extra electrical accessories. An alternator warning sticker on the inside of the hood. Extra wiring console in the engine compartment with those relays for driving and fog lights, horns, plus the extra fuse box and charging control. Sportier suspension, the same kind as the P1800, which is mainly shock absorbers and springs. And a separate supplement to the instruction book, specifically for the 123 GT. The 123 GT also came with Pirelli Cinturado P3 belt tires, and the dimensions were 165 SR15 on 4 inch wide rims. These cars did not come with 4.5 or 5.5 inch wide rims, which would not fit inside the spare tire compartment. The year before the 123 GT was first produced, the Volvo 140 series debuted in 1966. It introduced several improvements and safety innovations that found their way into the 122S and the 123 GT starting in late 1967. These included the dual circuit brake system, the power brake booster, and collapsible steering column. For 1968, many features of the 120 series lineup had changed, like the door handles, the brake system, and they all applied to the 123 GT as well. However, exclusive to the 123 GT, a relative small number of GT-only changes were made for 1968, such as the tachometer face, which was less chrome and more matte, and counted in thousands instead of hundredths, the relative location of the fender mirrors moved, and the Hella accessory lights were slightly larger. In 1969, in addition to the new larger B20B engine and J-type overdrive transmission, the rear axle ratio changed from 4.56 to 4.3 to 1. This is unique across all of the Amazons. The horn and fog light wiring was also simplified and reduced under the hood, doing away with the extra relay panel. And of the relatively few cars produced, most were being exported to Japan or Switzerland. In its final two years of production, much of the 123 GT trim and accessories were being sold in the Volvo Accessories book. So it may not be entirely uncommon to see some of these pieces in other Amazon models. This is Eddie, and he purchased this 1967 123 GT on eBay a few months ago. It's a Canadian import, and it's a real survivor. Its number is 133351M. M designates 1967 as the year. P for 1968, S if it were 1969, and T for 1970. Those models were all right-hand drive exclusively. And because so few 123 GTs were ever tracked and recorded, the next time the hood is up on an old 120 near you, take a second look at that production tag number. You may yet discover a GT hiding in plain sight. Thanks for watching.